to open up musical typing. Hey guys, I'm Alex. And I'm Drew. And today on the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast, we're taking a look at Spider-Man One More Day. Let's go. Don't ever change. <laughs> complex tablet. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm fine. I uh, tried to not ask either of you too much about what you've been up to uh, before we start this podcast, just so that we have something to talk oh, yeah. about I, when we start this. I think about that too. Seem yeah. kind of standoffish while we're setting up. <laughs> We don't speak. Yeah. No. Don't talk to me right now. Yeah. So it's uh, currently we're recording this in 2021, but I think by the time this comes out, shall be 2022. Wow. Happy A podcast that transcends years. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I was going to say something, but I don't feel like going into it. So yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Did you set any comic book resolutions? I already uh fulfilled one of mine yeah, what was it well I'm, I'm jumping ahead but it's kind of what you've been reading yo but i finished death of superman ah i'll talk about that more in yeah. what you've been reading yo but now the next one is my uh to end 2022 with an empty stack of shame and right now my stack of shame is roughly the, the size of my head that's a that's a lot of shame. That's uh, my books just stacked yeah. up. Uh, I'm still considering yeah. for me. Uh, this is abuse, uh, self hate, uh, self harm. Uh, considering my digital stack, uh, uh, stack of shame. See, that it's hard. I mean, there's the digital stack of shame that you actually truly have intent to read. Yeah, mine is. And huge. then <laughs> there's the one that you were like, well, I would read that. Like yeah. right now, I'm I'm trying to read. Animal Man from the 80s and Doom yeah. Patrol from the 80s. So I would call those my actual digital stack of shame. But there's other books that are out there that I should read that yeah. I don't know exist or I don't actually plan to read. Well, sure. I so guess you, you have to, you have to delineate the line the, somewhere. Truly, the ones that I have intent to read, I'm like, say, I'm like, I'm going to read this. Yeah. It's out Well, of I mean, control. we have the entirety of the new 52. Yeah, it's in, we're in the weeds. We're yeah. below the weeds. We're multiple, six feet under. Multiple thousands of books. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even, that's just from DC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. Uh, but do go ahead and tell us uh, what your comic book resolutions are, Drew. Where can they reach out and let us know about those? Yeah. Uh, tell us your New Year's uh, comic resolutions on Discord. Actually, I'm going to start by saying Discord. Um, yeah, Discord's that's, been hopping. That's It's good. Uh, we want to talk to you. That's like the easiest way to actually have conversations with us. That's what how we uh, launched and had our successful first ever two-man Secret Santa. What a hoot. Um, so you'll find a link down in the Discord, or down in the... The description. Description? The show, show notes. notes. That's what it was. I, I was going to say... where you're listening slash watching. I was going to say doobly-doo again. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a link down there. Um, please, we want you to engage with us there. You can find us on Twitter at Two Man Comic Book with the number two, Instagram, Facebook, Two Man, just search Two Man Comic Book Club. Um, shoot us an email, Two Man Comic Book Club at gmail.com. Give us a phone call, 662 Man Fan 8. Just talk, uh, talk to us, please. And possibly the most valuable thing to us would yes. be if you. If you're enjoying us, you've been listening. We're almost at 100 episodes. Um, maybe check out our Patreon and consider supporting us. Uh, we've got some ideas for things that we want to do if we can ever make this thing a little bit more financially feasible. So that's uh, you can find that just patreon.com slash two-man comic book club, once again, with the number two. Yeah, we uh, just need some uh, some backing to get some of those done because it takes a lot of extra work to get this done. Uh you can find me at all social media spaces at Alex Wayne Miller. Wayne is W A Y N E, just like Bruce Wayne, because I am Batman. Drew, where can they find you personally? You can find any uh, everything you need to know about me at DrewMorrisMusic dot com. Torrance, uh, you can find me at church every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all churches. I don't know about that. Any church. Um, cool. We're gonna cover uh, Spider Man. 
not just today. No, we but so you may be wondering. We've made it a hundred episodes. How have we not talked about Spider Man? Well, because we've just been going through and like thinking, hey, this is an interesting one. Everybody knows about Spider Man, right? Everybody knows about Batman. Everybody knows about Superman. Um, but we wanted to show you the Mister Miracles, the uh, Visions, stuff like that. But a new movie recently came out, and if you listened to our last episode, uh, you know all about it, and it kind of put us in a Spidey mood. So we had a, a collection of Spider-Man stories that we were thinking of covering, and we put it to a vote on the Discord, and it's kind of tied. And then Alex actually came up with another one that was even probably more appropriate after the new after No Way Home. So we're going to cover that one today. That's one more day, and we're going to go ahead and celebrate Spidey Month, Jan you Spidey, Sp- Spidey you wary. I, I didn't workshop that before I said it. Let's just call it Spider Month and or Spidey Month, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So this month we're dropping one more day. Uh, and then the next three months or the next three weeks, we're gonna cover the three that we kind of talk. Do we wanna say what, what they are what they are or do we want to leave it to a surprise? Um join our Discord if you really want to know so you can jump in and there actually read it. We'll, we'll be putting we'll say our what stuff it is. there that we're gonna read um, more frequently. So we're gonna cover four Spider Man mini series in four weeks. And yeah. the great thing is they're not continuous. So you can just like drop in and listen to number one mm-hmm. or number three or number four yeah. and then double back to number two, whatever. You don't have to have, you don't have to listen to six weeks to make them sure. sense. Yeah, so and they'll stand on their own, you know, yeah. they'll they'll connect to stuff if you want to go, you know, start puzzle piecing and fall down the rabbit hole, as we say. But um, So we're going to try that. Work. We're going to try that because um, some people have made comments that it's, it gets a little intimidating to drop in on vision issue or episode number four. You know, sometimes right. if you haven't checked the other ones. So we're going to try something new where maybe a, a story is covered in one, maybe two issues or two episodes yeah. this year. So this month, January of 2022 is Spidey Month. And if you want to tell who, who you want us to cover next, join the Discord and let us know. Yeah, do that. Um, Drew, what you been reading, yo? Oh, man. A whole bunch of stuff. You brought things to show yeah. the class. And technically, I haven't read any of those, but I'll get to those last. So... Like I mentioned, I finished Death of, Death of Superman, which um, I'd read the novelization before by Roger Stern. Um, he's one of the writers who did some of the stories. And I'll tell you, a lot of that story was awesome. Some of it was not. Um, just like the writing. It was from the 90s, and it sounds like it. Uh, some of the art wasn't super great, my, not my, my favorite. But overall, it's a story about Superman coming back and after fighting Doomsday, you know, and it's good, like, if you have an inkling that you would ever want to learn a little bit more about Superman, it might be a good place to check out um, to see kind of the old stuff. <clears throat> so I read that, and one of the one of the books that happens in the storyline is a Green Lantern book that's mm. not on DC Universe, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I went to go jump over and read it because there's this uh, cyborg Superman, spoiler alert, from like 30 years ago, um, he comes through, he turns out to be a bad guy. Yeah. And he destroys all of Coast City, which is Green Lantern's home. Uh, but it's actually him and Mongol working together. And it's just like, it's just like a, 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 a throw off. It's just like, oh yeah, 7 million people died. Moving just on. Off, off panel. Yeah. I mean, well, th- like the, the actual killing, it right. just happens so quick. Mm. And I was like, I wonder what happens. Like, this is Green Lantern's home. But they don't really address it much, right? No. Um, so I went to go check out the Green Lantern to see what was happening and how they addressed it there. Yeah. Turns out Hal Jordan was off world. Um, but he comes back and tr- helps to, to uh, defeat Mongol. And then I just kept reading because I f- um, Green Lantern, like, goes off the rails. Yeah. With this, and that might be something I'd like to go into a little bit more, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a, a future coverage, because I found out that after three or four episodes, like the the one that I wanted to read wasn't on DC Universe, but the one immediately after it was. So it's like, okay, I, I can put issue the pieces together. <laughs> yeah, it's called like Emerald Rain or something. I can't mm-hmm. Emerald Rain or something. Um, but it like three issues of Hal Jordan, and then the first issue of Kyle Rayner. Which nice. I have. Oh, cool. Um, so, like, I, I've I've been reading that, and I'm like, I think I'm just going to chunk along with There's this. There's so many Green Lanterns yeah. and other Lanterns. So, uh, but yeah, so I've been reading some Green Lantern, uh, Death of Superman, and I'm going to talk about two more real quick because I don't want to gobble up all the time. 
Couple, I, couple. I, I started reading the current run of Moon Knight mm. because I saw this YouTube video where someone's like, hey, this is a great place to jump onto Moon Knight if you don't know who he is. It's currently ongoing. There's three issues on Marvel Unlimited right now. Do you know who's doing it? I can tell you. Um, or I can look while you talk, I guess. Well, my thing is, there we go. No, mine's been acting weird and not letting me see all this stuff that I want. No, have you on the most recent update? Yes. Here, I'm just going to search Moon Knight. It's, the new update lets you Fascinating search. Radio. It does a pretty good job. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, I found it too. Details. I'll let you take it. Um, Let's read more. Not in here. Jed McKay is the writer. Alexa- Alessandro Capuccio, the penciler inker. Rachel Rosenberg is the oh, cool. colorist. I don't know if it changes from one to the next, but it's like... Each episode, each issue is almost episodic, but it fills it in as we go. Oh, cool. So I, w- I would recommend you jump into it. It's interesting, and there's a Moon Knight thing coming up soon. So yeah, um, it's worth it uh, if you have Marvel Unlimited. If not, you could probably find it in your local comic shop. If you don't have Marvel Unlimited and you're listening to almost episode 100 of this show, you're yeah. not listening. Uh, so that's good. I enjoy it. It's an interesting quirk. Um, I won't go into it much because he's a guy who might – be worthy of us mentioning or covering. Yeah. And another one, I'm just going to say there's a current Hulk run that's in comic shops right now. Mm -hmm. Number three is going to come out in a couple weeks. Um, What do you say? Danny? Donnie. Donnie Cates. Yeah. Um, Some of you might know him from like Silver Surfer Black. No, no, no. That's not Donnie Cates. He did did the most Venom, recent Venom run. Silver Was Was it him? Okay, yeah, that's Donnie Cates. Okay, I wasn't misspeaking. For a second, I... As soon as I said Silver Surfer Black, uh, a screenshot of Dan Slot smiling flashed across my head. Uh, but I just remember that he did Silver Surfer at some point. So my subconscious fought me on that. So there's a new Hulk out. And yeah. I'm just going to tell you the premise because it might be enough to hook some of you. Yeah. So, and the tagline at the bottom is, maybe Bruce Banner isn't protecting us from the Hulk. What if the Hulk is protecting us from Bruce Banner. And so basically Bruce Banner has figured out a way to partition Hulk's mind Mm -hmm. and turn Hulk's body into a spaceship. (laughs) Yeah. So like, wow, we see very comic booky. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, So like Hulk is behind one partition, like Mm -hmm. smashing the door and Bruce Banner is in the control seat of the other one in the psyche yeah. And like he's like fighting Iron Man, like trying to get through. And basically he has it's like imagine the danger room from right. X-Men. That's what Hulk inside the brain mm-hmm. is doing. Because as long as he keeps Hulk angry, the spaceship Hulk gets fueled. But he's like talking as Weird. Bruce Banner. Yeah. And it's just like, okay. I mean, yeah. so far is it is it like really campy or are you like, no, I, I'm intrigued? I'm intrigued. Okay. And that's why I almost had yeah. you try to find one whenever we went to the shop the other day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's early. Uh, it's not on Marvel Unlimited yet. Right. But it should be yeah. in a couple months. I mean, if you don't know, I mean, I remember when I first started reading comics, I was I did a bad job of like paying attention to who was making these things that I liked. Um, you should try to go out of your way and like, not only just because you know, they deserve recognition for this, but also you'll probably find some other stuff that you like. It's the Tom King binge that I've been on for the last year. Um, Donnie Cates is one of the hottest uh, writers in Marvel right now. Like he's Mm -hmm. writing all these big projects. He did Guardians of the Galaxy. He did all the Venom stuff. He did Silver Surfer Black. He, um, he's doing the crossover event for Image Comics. He did, um, uh, the, the God, uh, God Country. Yeah, he yeah. did that one. Like, he's being optioned he's, into a uh, Netflix show. Yeah, making a and he's like actually helping out mm-hmm. with that too. Like, he's hitting a bunch of home runs right now. So, big big uh, deal that he's doing the Hulk. So I didn't want to take over all of this, but I do want to show. Um, show it off. We got time. My uh, my secret Santa was Colby, and he got me. Oh God! <laughs> this. <laughs> if you're listening, Drew is holding up a pretty uh, full tote bag. So I'm just going to show you. He went to yeah, like uh, Rock Bottom Comics, comics. Uh, our local comic shop, and got me the, the indie comic grab bag. Ah. 65 comics. Um, and I opened it with him the other day, but there's a variety of things ranging from like 
a bunch of Zorro titles. There's one uh, written by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, about Mycroft Homes. And I've got Masks and Masks 2. There's a cool one called Arcadia, which is about a flu ravaging the world. It's from cool. like uh, 10 years ago. Um, I've got Escape from New York. And there's a bunch of like, there's a bunch of like continual stories that I have a good number of. But anyway, so this is one of the reasons my stack of shame is almost the size of my head. Yeah. So thank you, Colby. Um, I'll be talking more about these in my future What You've Been Reading Yos mm. for anybody who's curious. Um, I want to know who wrote the Zorro stuff or what uh, company put that. It's a... They all look like this. Um, American Mythology Productions. And there's like three or four or five different titles. So it's like three or four at a time. I haven't, I haven't read any of them, but I'm really curious to see. Yeah. Cool. So Alex, what you've been reading, yo, now that I took 30 minutes to talk about it. Wow. That's uh, some time travel considering we've only been recording for 20. <laughs> uh, I've been reading a few things though. Not as much as you for once. I think you're actually beating me. Um, I've, uh, this is a good thing, but over the holidays, I've seen family like nonstop mm-hmm. to some extent. Like we're traveling somewhere, or going, or having people over. Been really good. Happy to see everybody, but it's cut into my comic book reading time. But I did pick up yesterday from the comic shop two books um, and then two more a couple weeks ago that I've squeezed in. So, first one I'll show you is I'm still reading Human Target. This is Human Target number three. Uh, as I said earlier, I mentioned Tom King can uh in my book do no wrong right now he is uh easily my favorite writer that's doing stuff right now he's just uh i'll probably say this a million more times on this podcast but there's some like element of just grounded and uh, humanity to all of his stories like in a realness that even on a cosmic level or with superheroes and superpowers and flying that just feels real and weighted and there's consequence and I don't know. It's just easy to relate to, and the storytelling's so good. This so good. This was a very fun issue. Um, oh, is that Booster? Yeah, Booster yeah. Gold is in this, um, but also a Green Lantern. Guy Gardner. Um, yes, Guy, Guy Gardner, Gardner yeah. is in this. So this was a fun issue. Um, Tom King wrote some cool stuff. Also, uh, Greg Smallwood, I believe, does the art. Yeah, incredible art. Um, very unique style. I'm yeah. I uh, won't be surprised if this gets nominated for an Eisner and even wins some. So Human Target reading that. This one I picked up yesterday purely based on the hype um, of what I've been reading in comic book Twitter. This is Wonder Woman Historia. See, I almost picked that up uh, whenever it came out, but I was like, I'm, I am I budget myself every time I walk in, yeah. and that was already over my budget. Right, so. so the cover price of this was like 7 bucks, and it's already bumped up to 12 Yeah. So I picked it up because it's... Uh, not only oversized, but there's like 64 pages in this. Yeah, I need to tell you all, everybody, everybody, gather in. I was exhausted in a good way after reading <laughs> this. Okay, That's this funny. took some energy out of me. The art alone. Okay, first off, Kelly Sue DeConnick is the one who wrote this. If you don't know who that is, she is like the main reason that Captain Marvel is like blown up over the last decade. She also wrote. She's done a lot of girl power stuff. Um, she wrote, um, this is a controversial title, uh, future Alex and Drew might have to bleep this out. It's called bitch planet, um, which is a pretty also like female power, uh, girl power kind of type of book. Um, she's done just so many awesome stuff, but like, I loved her Captain Marvel run. So I was like, super excited just to see like, okay, what can she do with wonder woman? Because I believe this is the first time she's ever written for wonder woman. Um, She's also, fun fact, though this is not necessarily important, but it's fun fact, she's married to Matt Fraction, who did the Hawkeye run. So what a power couple in the comic book world. The art, though, I don't know. They, the two can't really exist without each other, right? I mean, they can or whatever. Like, we can argue all day about that. But uh, let's see. Who did the art? Phil Jimenez. Jimenez I'm, I'm assuming it's Phil Jimenez. Um it's incredible. It's so rich. Like uh, the only way I can describe this. And then three people colored this. This was colored with by Hi-Fi, Arif Prianto, and Romulo Fer- Ferjado, Ferjado Jr. I apologize for butchering those names. Um, the pencils and the art and the inks and the color, it is so rich. It's like you ever eat a sweet and it's just like so much or it's almost to the point of savory. Like mm-hmm. it truly is. Some panels I feel... 
I don't know if I've ever felt like I had to like stop and like truly take in all the art because so much was happening and there's so many like full double page spreads mm. that I felt guilty for not trying to just look and take in all the textures and the detail. It is uh, high praise. It was a very exciting book. Like very seldom does the art just like force me to mm. stop reading and just step around. And maybe I should take more time to See, do that in the future. But I just it is, picked up, um, Batman One Dark Knight or Dark Knight One, the one that Jock did. Yeah. And it's a black label also. Mm-hmm. I haven't I haven't even cracked it open. I'm wondering if it's gonna do the same thing for me. Yeah, I don't know. Um I've noticed though that the black label thing I mean, this is black yeah. label. Yeah. Um wasn't Mr. Miracle also black label? I'm pretty sure it was. I don't remember. Uh DC's black label is doing a lot of cool stuff. Basically it's like they take all their hot writers and they they let them tell like canon optional stories, but I don't I don't know what the what's in the sauce for the black label, but it's awesome. Because um, I also have the Superman year one or year two or whatever yeah. it was that I bought. That was black label and mm-hmm. I wasn't a big fan. No? Yeah. Okay, maybe. I mean, I've only I mean, read a handful. It's hit or miss, I'm sure. Right, yeah. Just like, just like anything, every comic that ever came out isn't good. Yeah, you I'll know? just say this is, I haven't even told you what it's about. The art is incredible no matter what, like period. Uh, it's objective. The story is like a a retelling or a, I will say a reclaiming of the history of the Amazons being told for once from the perspective of the women and the Amazons, not from man's Hmm. perspective. Um, Super cool book. Kelly Sudaconic is awesome. Uh, This art by Phil Jimenez is insane all the way. I'll let you Mm -hmm. thumb through some of this. It's, I mean, it's heavy. It's just like so rich and thick. Um, I couldn't help but be, Mm-hmm. distracted by it in a good way nice. i've also i don't have them in here i have them in my bedroom but i don't want to leave tori if you could throw it on the ipad real quick um i've also been reading what's the furthest place from here mm. oh um, yeah i remember when you brought that up yeah I this is number one and uh number two i believe uh, they're both like similar copies it's um it's an image book and i'm not far enough in it to know exactly what's happening yet like i have some premise but i think it'd be better for it to be re- it's you know, post-apocalyptic. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like kids are the only ones that are around and having adults that are that still exist but seem few and far between. Having them around you is pretty mm-hmm. taboo. Um, it's interesting. That's a Matthew Rosenbar, uh, Rosenberg and Tyler Boss book. Um, nice. That's the stuff that I've been chewing on the most. Uh, Tori, what about you? What have you been reading, yo? Uh, I've been reading Spider-Man one day at a time. <laughs> one more day. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. Uh, your New Year's resolution was to read the <laughs> stuff for the podcast, so you're you're starting strong, right? Um, you got you said you read a graphic novel from DJ, right? Yes, DJ got me a graphic novel called Black Hole that was very good. Uh, I finished it in one day. It was. I can't recommend it to everybody because it is spicy. Yes. Um, but it was very good. It's going to stick with me for a while. Lots of weird images. <laughs> nice. DJ always uh, bringing the, the challenging I mean, books. I forgot to mention, yeah, uh, the book that Torrance got me at DJ's recommendation, mm-hmm. Leaving Richard's Valley, I read that. That was that big, thick, like square one. That? Yeah, I read it and finished oh, wow. it. Um, I just took a... One afternoon, I just started it, and I was like, this is weird. Mm-hmm. And then another day, I was like, yeah, okay, it's starting to make sense. And then I was like, yeah, let's finish this. So if you want to check it out, I'll, I'll, I meant to bring it this time. and just forgot. It oh, was cool. in the wrong stack. But it's really interesting. Uh, DJ definitely has some recommendations from time to time that are things that I would never even think about. So. Yeah, he, uh, he's the fresh, the hip guy in the, yeah. in the Discord. He knows all the things. He actually, in a very quick little message changed my thoughts to an extent on the uh toby mcguire dance scene in spider-man yeah, 3 whenever we were talking about that yeah. <laughs> yeah like uh he kind of put something into perspective i was like you know what i kind of agree with that mm-hmm. he uh basically like okay so i think most people tend to trend towards that scene we'll get to the the real content in a <laughs> second ladies and gentlemen um they tend to trend towards that scene being kind of campy and cheesy and not quite landing on its feet um, and I, I still tend to feel that way. Like, I don't know if I can ever just be like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, but uh, DJ basically said, like, 
this makes sense to me because uh, Peter Parker is not some like cool, hip uh, high school kid who's like, you know, privy to all the new stuff. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that a kid who maybe is kind of awkward when he has the bravado and the confidence to jump in and actually do something completely misses the mark on what is actually cool. But in Peter Parker's mind, what he's doing is actually cool. Um, I buy that. So maybe uh, on my next watching of that, it won't uh, make my skin crawl as much. (laughs) By the way, um, I have watched every Spider-Man movie. Um, in the I've last couple of days, the, the three not. Toby movies, the two Garfield movies, and the two Tom Holland movies in preparation to go rewatch No Way yeah. Home in the theaters. Uh, Are you going to go watch it in Dolby Atmos? That's the plan. Yeah. Probably that's, Friday. That's theater one. You have yeah. to make sure you pick the right one. They're not all Atmos. So, um, I rewatched it in Atmos, and I'm disappointed that the sound in the IMAX is not as good as Atmos. It's not even close on I've always felt being that. honest. Yeah. Like, they need to, they need to, I need, I need the IMAX people to build a partnership with the Dolby people. Yeah. Um, I don't understand, honestly, like how that, how there's a disconnect there. Like, why would you not? I mean, it's also cheaper too. Like it's six or seven bucks cheaper to get an Atmos ticket. Mm-hmm. Which sounds, I mean, I did feel myself missing like just the, the immersiveness yeah. of like the height of the IMAX screen. It's, you know, it's kind of like pick which one you want for the day because mm-hmm. you'll notice both of them uh, greatly. Uh, anyway, should we take a quick break and then jump yeah. right into Spider-Man? Cool. Sounds good. We will be right back. And we're back, and we are covering Spider-Man One More Day, parts one through four. That is the entire collection of this. This jumps across several different Spider-Man stories, but it is kind of a collected story. Uh, just to kind of set a back scope, this takes place shortly after the events of the OG Civil War event. Yeah. Um, which is pretty awesome. If you haven't read that, it's all on Marvel Unlimited, mm-hmm. or you can find a trade of it. Pretty awesome. Spider-Man is a major player in Civil War comics. Major player. Way more so than he was. I mean, he was definitely introduced in the movie in the mm-hmm. MCU, but, I mean, it was uh, it was kind of like the the swing vote, if you will, as far as... I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, let me know what you thought of the... Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home thumbnail on YouTube. I spent an embarrassing amount of time in Photoshop mm-hmm. making that happen. Drew thinks it belongs in the Louvre. Yes. Uh, cool. So Spider-Man One More Day starts off with The Amazing Spider-Man number 544. Uh, we got this pretty awesome cover here. Um, if you only had one more day, what would you do? Which I do have to say, um, with that preamble, mm-hmm. is that the right use? Um it did not do anything. I was expecting to see like Spider-Man be like, oh, I've got one day to live. You know, that's what I was taking right. from it, thinking I've got one day to live. I'm going to go uh, see, oh, God. It was going to be so funny. Um, anyway, I'm going to yeah. go to the Louvre. I'm going to go see this. <laughs> I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go see uh, Wayne It's a Newton. blowout sale. I've only got one yeah. more day to take, it, take advantage. In retrospect, I realized my joke was going to be, I'm going to go see Wayne Newton, and that's not as funny as I thought. <laughs> Maybe Liberace. I'm going to go see Liberace. Yeah. You know, I was expecting, like, you got a day to do all these things. And right. the story is not that. It doesn't quite go that way. No. But we'll get to that. Um, I should say, I guess, because of how fresh Spider-Man No Way Home is, this will likely contain spoilers for that film because there are yeah. a lot of parallels from this One More Day story that they absolutely took yeah. inspiration from for the film. I wonder if it would be possible for us to try to be spoiler free as we're talking about it and then just like dump it at the end um like talk about really what we think that's what i was just thinking i think it might be possible but it might be hard so don't time. reference like so this was like the moment yeah until the end i but mean then, i can try to remember I don't but know then if yeah we'll forget yeah. so forget it just to just say yeah, yeah just take a pause we'll, we'll try watch to watch the movie <laughs> we'll, we'll try to be swift with yeah. it so that maybe if we say here's the spoiler maybe you can just skip forward right i don't know yeah uh, spoiler warning for Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, so Spider-Man One More Day starts off and we get like essentially what happened again. We're going to give you the high notes. Please go read this. It's four issues. They actually read pretty quick. Like I was mm-hmm. moving through them quick and getting through them. So uh, Aunt May was shot and she's in the hospital in the ICU yes. because somebody tried to take out Peter Parker. Because the world knows. Because now they know 
who Peter Parker is. So in the Civil War in the MCU, it's different than the one for um, the comics. I mean, they kind of have the same premise, but it's the Superhero Registration Act in the comics. And it's the side of Tony Stark thinks everybody should register. Uh, you should everybody should know your identity so you can be held accountable for your actions. Captain America's side is against that and thinks that the anonymity is still important. So the big swing is uh, Peter Parker joins Iron Man early on and is the first like big superhero to reveal his identity who wasn't out before. So um, it's like one of the the uh, key moments in an early issue of Civil War. So um, he eventually switches sides to Captain America. We'll probably cover Civil War one day, and that's, a, I guess, a spoiler for that as well, but that's also came out in like 2006. So um, anyway, everybody knows he's out, and like it happens in many comic books, like the fact that people know who you are and know who your loved ones are, they can come for you. And I don't think in this they were actually going for Aunt May, but he was around Mary Jane and yeah. Aunt May, and they knew where to find him because now he's just a guy that you can kind of look up. Mm-hmm. And a sniper shot at him and missed Peter and hit Aunt May, and now she's on the verge of death, and Peter Parker is fully thinking, like, he's responsible for this. So um, we're, like, we get this, like, pretty heavy spread of her in bed and, like, dying. Mm-hmm. And just like... Uh, in the movie, we've seen this in the trailers, Peter ends up going to Doctor Strange to try to fix this because he's being mm-hmm. told by the doctors um, she's probably not going to make it. Um, and honestly, we don't have even the resources unless you've got deep pockets to like take care of her. And the only reason that one of the doctors agrees to like do his best to pull some strings is because he claims that at one point Spider-Man saved his life. Can I jump in and yes. say there is one before he goes to Doctor Strange... He goes to Tony. Yes, like that's that a big moment. Yeah, yeah like sure. uh, there's a, an intense, and and Peter's not even in his unit in, in his outfit. He's yeah. like everybody knows what's the matter, and I'm in a hurry. He well, goes, he goes to, there because the guy the doctor tells him like, yeah. you need some money, and yeah. he's like, well, here's a guy I know who's money, and yeah, Spider Man thinks it's his fault. Yeah, and Tony's basically like, look, I can't do this, and and he's they fight. It's <laughs> It's pretty intense. I've been listening. Fight. I've been listening to a whole lot of my marvelous a year, yeah. and there's the number of times that they talk about two superheroes meet each other Mm -hmm. and before talking they start swinging fists yeah and that's exactly what happens because you know there's there's bad blood between them but he's like look i'm not here for me i'm here for may Mm -hmm. you know may and tony stops and he's just like look i can't do this it'll get traced back to me and you're like god you you jerk and then he makes it back home and jarvis comes in he's like is there anything you'd like sir and he's like no actually and then the next scene jarvis comes in saying that he is jarvis morgan yeah because Peter Parker, they checked in under an alias. So that they don't yeah. make it worse. And so Jarvis, who's like, uh, $2 million has been dropped into my account for, for my, uh, my for sister cousin, or yeah. cousin or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay, so Tony's still cool. He's I still mean, got a heart at least to some extent. Even though in the, in public, like he, he figures out a way to help. And, yeah. then, and then that's whenever she, he's, she's kind of stabilized, maybe. Yeah. And he goes to Doctor Strange. Right. And then so... Just because we mentioned this fight, Tori, if you pull up the iPad, if you're not there already, this was like a gnarly scene. We get Peter Parker just throwing oh. a left hook across oh. Iron Man's thing and like busting his yeah. knuckles. Um, and he makes a comment. Cool Ever since my webs went internal. Yeah. Uh, Is I that don't like, remember it looked, if they, or when that happened. There's stuff at the very end of the book mm-hmm. where it looks like it's not like in Toby's where right. it's, it's biological. Right. It's like I think he literally has things implanted oh. into him. Gotcha. But it comes out of his thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm right. wrong. But I was like, I saw that and I was like, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I will say, I think Tori and I were talking about this before we started recording. Some of the depictions of the faces are a little weird. Yeah. Um, like if if so I could like somehow copy out and just see this guy punching Iron Man, I'd be like, who is that? Mm-hmm. I don't, that doesn't look like Peter Parker to me. Um, this is Joe Casada driven or drawn though, um, which is, uh, quite the big name in the Marvel I universe mean, as far as creating. In my eyes, as I was reading this, like, yeah, the face, like some, it was, I use the word grotesque on this show too much. Um, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't grotesque, but like the details, like the overlining of faces. Yeah. I felt like it just kind of worked for the the anguish that everybody was feeling in the moments mm-hmm. you know so it's just like yeah it, it might look weird but yeah peter parker's not himself right now right it's not as bad as uh what do we read the uh, tower of babel faces 
Yeah, those were just flat out ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, it's definitely not my favorite. But I, it wasn't to the point of just completely mm-hmm. distracting me. So anyway, yes, Peter goes on to Talk find. To oh yeah, there was a, sorry. One more panel. Oh, yeah. He like completely unloads his webs <laughs> all over <laughs> Iron Man. And that's whenever I mentioned it, he was just like, ever since my webs went internal, I've yeah. wondered what would happen if I just let go. This panel was and incredible. It shows him, and then you you cut to it, and it's just like, yeah, he looks like a mummy. Right. Yeah. Anyway. He does eventually go to Doctor Strange, just like he does. He's basically like saying it. Like the, the doctors here are telling me, you know, nothing can be done. Sorry, was that in? Okay, yeah. So that's basically what happens yeah, that's in the issue first one. The it, first one, he doesn't even strange, get to Doctor Strange, yeah. and he basically tells MJ he's going to go talk to him mm-hmm. and like try to actually get some help because he he's refusing to accept that this doctor saying, look. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm amazed that you got this Hail Mary two million dollars to at least make her comfortable, but mm-hmm. she's she's already really old. She's probably not gonna live. And uh he just refuses to accept that. So then we move on to friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Yeah. Uh let me pull up the earlier pages of this so that I can get the actual credits. Uh so this is the same team, right? Did I say it last time? Michael Straczynski, Joe Casada. Uh, Danny, Mickey, Richard, Asenov, and then Chris Eliopoulos. Maybe they just gave everybody the week off. Um, yeah, they said, all right, you, guys, you You're normally doing friendly Spider-Man, but hey, we're going to take it for this week. Right, yeah. So um, we do actually get to him going to Doctor Strange. Yep. We're trying to get to these and panels. Man, there's a lot of things that were very similar. Like just yes. even the design of the, of the I got vibes. Sanctum Sanctorum? Well, uh, no, of the of the bowl thing that they're doing the spells over it it reminded me a lot of the way home yeah so dr strange is in there doing magic peter's like pitching his case like hey this is my fault what can we do and uh, dr strange is basically telling him there's nothing there's nothing we can do even goes on he's just like for a second i thought we were going to get a little recap like hey if you don't know who dr strange is let me give you a quick quick backstory but it was really saying yeah my hands i was a surgeon my hands were destroyed but i learned from the ancient one all that stuff but Eventually, he just right. got to the point. He's like, "But look, there's as a surgeon, the one thing I've learned is that the people don't regret, you know, all kinds of stuff, but they do regret not being there at their side." And it's just him saying, "Like, look, you need to be with her. You need to be by her side because she'll remember you. Right? Uh, she'll she she can hear you." Um, but then he's like, "No, I got to do something." And that's yeah. whenever uh, the spell's different than from No mm-hmm. Way Home. It was an interesting one. Yeah, he uh, he basically sends him back and to he just everywhere at once to everywhere and every point in time. And there's this cool like full spread here, mm-hmm. um, like you see him pleading with Doctor Doom and like with uh, uh, what's his name, Mister uh, Ultimate Universe Reed Richards. The uh, oh really? Yeah, what's his name? I he's I a can't vi- he's a villain. He's like super evil in the Ultimate Universe. He's like one of the main. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, the it's the something. The, I'm such a inventor. I the, suck so bad at, at comic sorry. books. Anyway, you see him pleading with all these people with T'Challa, with Morbius, with Doc Ock, mm-hmm. with uh, Hank Pym, um, just all these people. And he's just he's getting told yeah. no. And he comes back and tells Doctor Strange that they also told him the same thing. And uh, yeah. basically, in a very similar manner to what happens in the film, Peter tampers with the spell after coming back to try to like actually do some yeah. time travel. I, there was a neat moment where yeah. they, they actually gave us the, the translation and then the Latin of what it was yes. that he said. And Peter is like, you know, there's 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 something that's similar between engineers and doctors. Mm-hmm. And that is that we all kind of have to know Latin. Right. So he basically set, he, he remembered the spell because he's super smart. And yeah. I, he, I didn't go back to check to see if he said the same one or if he altered it a little right. bit to help him. But yeah, so he shoots himself back in time. Yeah, but to a very specific moment. Yeah, we finally see what happened with May. Yeah, so he ends up inside the room where the shooter is who's about to shoot, and the guy's just kind of resting, waiting for them. But he's he's uh, in, intangible. like he Kind of like how anything. in the movie he gets pushed out of his body, yeah, but he's yeah. still like Good call. holding yeah. the thing there. So they kind of, I mean, again, there's a lot of parallels. I didn't know I didn't that they pulled that so part, much yeah. from him. Yeah. Um, so he like try, is trying to, even though he's intangible and ghost like, he's trying to fight this guy. He's just hands are just phasing through him. The guy doesn't even know he's there. Yeah. But he does have a couple moments of him. He says, "I have to try." He sees himself mm-hmm. out there. This is very. Uh, actually, I'm going to save this analogy because it's it's better for later. Um, he's he's out there. He sees himself, and he's like, "Have you ever seen um, Interstellar?" Yeah. 
okay, so when he's in that library at the very end, spoilers for Interstellar, Mm -hmm. and he's like pushing the books off the thing, Mm -hmm. and it's himself, you know, he's like, but he can't quite in the moment get that. He's he's basically, I think, activating his own spider sense or at least some sort of awareness and trying to do it. But long story short, he ends up reliving it again. Mm -hmm. Um, Nothing changes. Nothing changes. He has to just watch Aunt May die again. There's also these kind of demon things that in this... Uh, plane that they're on are literally there to stop what he's doing what or he's what he's doing, trying to stop do. trying yeah. to tamper with you, time. You see this a lot, you know, mm-hmm. basically wraiths that exist to write the timeline, to correct the right. timeline. So, yeah, here's a pretty tragic panel of him again having to watch Aunt May get shot and then he sees himself covering MJ and then both of them screaming, uh, no. And it just goes through again and Doctor Strange comes in. Um, using the Eye of Agamotto, which yeah. is not the Time Stone of this. It's just a powerful magical okay. thing. I was wondering. And it gets him out and brings him back to the Sanctum Sanctorum, but at a different point because yeah. he, of time travel, essentially. Yeah, time travel. Like the time travel paradox, you can't like see. or you He can't, can't see your past self, you know. Right. So he, he goes to a time that he knows that Doctor Strange is out so that he can heal P- Peter Parker in the Sanctum Sanctorum. But he ends up having a conversation with that times Peter Parker. Right. Um, but Peter's like in this protective thing. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, it, and there's a... Time travel. I fun. didn't actually... Did you go read us number 42 I to d- see? I didn't. I didn't either. I might do that later. But I have a feeling that whatever Doctor Strange told this times Peter... Is important. Spider-Man is important based on this right here. This is mm-hmm. see Amazing Spider-Man number 42 for the rest of this scene. So yeah. just another little continuity thing yeah. that they did here. Um, essentially... Um, he tells Peter to stay there and like not try to mess anything up, yeah. and, uh, and he heals him. He heals him and takes care takes, of him, puts and, him back in the time they came from. Right, and basically tells him like what Drew said earlier: you need to try and just go be with her. Like that's yeah. that's the biggest mistake you're making right now is that you're not like letting her go. He lets him know like her death is important mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of the multiverse existing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, people die. That's probably her time. But again, Peter Parker can't just come to terms with the fact that this was his fault in his eyes. Just kind of like mm-hmm. the same reason that he has spoiler alert that Aunt May dies in Spider-Man No Way Home. He feels that it's his fault again, that she was there and he could have done something to stop it. And it's just kind yeah. of, you know, you can imagine it takes over this rage. So anyway, he leaves He's outside, it's raining, he's in the soup, and then this little girl walks up to him with red hair and basically says that she can fix yeah, this like, problem. You can't you can't change time, but I can. Yeah. And when I saw this, I had no idea who this was. Yeah. Um I had never seen claim. this character. I had a feeling like maybe we'll see, but um super interesting that this little girl just kind of shows up. Um Drew, do you want to take this next yeah. issue? And hey, the next issue, which is it the same creative was, team? Oh, I don't know. Was it's accidentally Sensational Spider-Man. The first book that Torrance read of this series. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is the big twist. So, so this is... Uh, yeah, same team. Same team. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to try to go through quick. Um, the, the girl leads him to somebody. So One can, preface just for you to view this lens through of everything he's going to say. This is essentially... This is the analogy I was going to use earlier. Uh, Chris, or like Ghost of Christmas Past. Dude, you took my... You took my Did I really? Yeah, it's in I'm, my notes right here. I'm like so the sorry. Ghosts of Christmas Carol. <laughs> I thought you were going to start reading stuff. No, I'm, I've got my notes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you took... You, I was going to sound smart to people. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, so you were smart. You got there and you wrote it down. <laughs> the little girl's like basically leading him through people. And the first guy we meet is this dude. He's like playing a Game Boy. Or no, he was reading a magazine or something. And it's just this this guy who just like kind of quickly divulges his life. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah. I, He's uh, reading a book. I wasn't Atlas successful. Shrugged. Yeah, at, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And Rand. And he, he just talks about, I love video games, you know, because I never really had anybody. Mm-hmm. And then before they're able to get into much, an- another guy calls him from a really nice car. Yeah. And he, he sits down inside, like, just taking a ride with strangers, whatever. Who did you think this was when you first saw it? Uh, well, I don't want to say because I, that's who it was. Okay, I thought it was Tony Stark okay. from because there's, like, a red car and it kind of looks like an older, like, Howard Stark yeah. a little bit. He's got these heads up to, sp- like, it right. looks, it looks like very tech. tech. Yeah. So he sits down and this guy is telling him, like, yeah, I had this woman I loved, but I didn't get her. You know, I've got so many women on speed dial. They'll come by. I'm successful. I've got millions, all this stuff. And and then he, he gets them 
to this, the place where he's supposed to go. But it's just like, so you have this one guy who's not successful, one guy that's super successful, but unhappy. Both right. are unhappy. Um, and then we finally, he drops him off to this woman in red. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see. She basically tells him, so those people that you met, you know, she talks a little bit about time right. and, and the, the multiverse and whatnot, sort of, not necessarily in those terms. She talks about it in terms of dreams. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's like, those two people that you just met were other possible yous. And then right. it goes back and fills it in. You realize both, both of these were what might have happened with one different sentence, one small change. Like the multiverse doesn't change with big events. It changes with small things like right. the butterfly effect. It shows one here like somebody calling him right before he gets bit by the spider mm-hmm. and he turns away and then somebody walks by and actually steps on the spider that would have turned him into Spider-Man. Just tell us small yeah. little thing. Yeah. And so this, this, the young or the, the first guy we met is just like, he never, he never met, he never became Spider-Man, never mm-hmm. got to know MJ and was just sad and dejected from it. The other guy went another way and that was him whenever he got super successful. Yeah. And started Parker Industries. Yeah. Which, I mean, he did for real. He eventually and, does do that yeah, in the comics, so, yes. But he wasn't Spider-Man. He was just like the typical uh, Wall Street tycoon that works and works and makes a ton of money, money, but money doesn't give him happiness type of thing. Right. And then this uh, this woman in red who we see, I don't know if I I'm start glowing red. Yeah, and she turns into who everybody expected her to be the second you see her, Mephisto. Yeah, so, so we get this awesome panel here of Mephisto jumping out, and mm-hmm. it's so timely. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you're under a rock, uh, which if you're listening to this podcast, you're not, you know that everybody's been screaming about Mephisto <laughs> for mm-hmm. literally the entire year of MCU projects. Like since WandaVision came out, the first project of this year, it's got to be Mephisto. And then ever since then, it's just like, okay, where's Mephisto? Everybody thought mm-hmm. that because of... So there are people that had read this well before we're talking about it now, obviously, but they thought just because of the parallels in the trailer mm-hmm. that Doctor Strange was Mephisto. was Mephisto because there's obviously some pretty heavy parallels mm-hmm. from you know, how this turns up, and they for sure had to have taken some influence. Yeah. Um, anyway, carrying on. So he has this interesting conversation with Mephisto. It's like, okay, so you're here. You're going to make a deal with me. You want my soul. Yeah. And this is a really interesting thing. Mephisto was like, ah, souls? I'll, I might get your soul anyway. Souls yeah. are nothing. Where's the fun in that, he yeah. says. What I want is misery. I want your misery. So basically he's just, we don't really get the deal, but he's just like, I can save Aunt May in exchange for something. Right. And, but before he even considers it, he's like, I can't, I, I'm not just me. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got a life partner. I need to talk to MJ. Right. He's like, of course. And they open this door and MJ is having the same conversation with Mephisto. And, and that's just kind of where it ends. Right. It's just like, they're, they they start to t- kind of talk about it, but we wrap up. Yes. Um, well, he does say what they what he wants. He yeah, says, okay. they ask him, like, he's like, enough games, what do you want? And I'll just read this right here. He says, what I want is greater than any one paltry soul can, provi- soul can provide me. What I want is the one thing in the universe that is truly greater than the sum of its parts and the tastier than any single soul that I could devour. I want that which gives you joy, which sustains you in your moments of greatest despair, the source not of your power, but your strength, your happiness, your dreams, and your passion. I want your love. I want your marriage. Yeah. And basically we get them reacting to that, and then that's where is that suddenly where MJ kind of, right, right before it ends, you see that she's kind of like considering wants to hear him out yeah. at least, and then it ends. Yeah. Um. So pretty heavy stuff, which again, we kind of see some parallels of what might happen. Yeah. Peter Parker mm-hmm. messes up the spell in the movie because he realizes MJ is going to forget who he mm-hmm. is. So somebody taking away his love. But in a bit of a twist, uh, well, do, do we just assume that the next one's the same creative team? I think so, yeah. I'll let you... <laughs> they changed the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why they would. But... Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, so we kind of jump in and we're still in the conversation and they're kind of considering it, you know, or mm-hmm. like just keeping their options open. And, but MJ's like, look, it's not a sweet enough deal for you yeah. just to save MJ for the sake of us losing our marriage. Like, save Aunt May. Uh, yeah. You sorry. Save MJ, yeah. Um, the identity needs to be wiped. So basically, MJ is the one that's asking what Peter asked in No Way Home. Right. You know, and it's just like, she's like, if we forget this, it solves a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. And, um, and 
like Peter's like, stop, what are you doing? And like right. be- before they're even able to, like he, he begrudgingly agrees. Yeah. They both agree to the deal. And for the sake of Aunt May, for the sake of many things, and Mephisto at the last second, like switches back into the woman in red, I think. Yeah. And she's like, you know, I'm surprised you never asked who that little girl was. Right. And I was just like, oh, this, uh, this and exactly what I thought was going to happen, happened. She's like, this was the daughter that you're never going to have from this marriage. Right. Because and you they're like, just, no. yeah. Um, there was this very tasteful moment when Peter and MJ decide, okay, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. We've got one more day. Yeah love each other and they just sit there and kind of embrace each other and it's the same panel over and over with yeah. the shades of the day of the natural light changing on each one of them it's it's a really kind of beautiful moment and yeah. uh he kind of talks eventually at the very end and she just shushes him like don't ruin this yeah. moment stay in it and then they it, it ends and peter wakes up to a brand new day which is the, the the whole thing. I almost started reading the brand new day thing. I'll get into it in a second, but like uh, I almost started reading this, the one that happens after one more day, like three years ago. And for what a reason I never did. So Peter wakes up and him and MJ have apparently in this continuity recently had a falling out. So they know each other. It's not right. like, it's not like they don't know each other. They still grew up together, but something happened right. and they never hit it off. And uh, so what they yeah, do? they go to this party for Harry Osborne. Because she's Harry's there. back from Europe, and, and uh, it's icy between them. Yeah, you and, can see her leaving here mm-hmm. kind of in... just They didn't really even talk or interact. They're just yeah. nothing to each other, kind of the same yeah. way that it ends in the movie. My name is Peter Parker, and can I have a coffee? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they the difference between this and No Way Home, spoiler, right. is Peter doesn't remember anything now. Sure. So, I mean, oh, the, the one thing, this was the deal with Mephisto saying... I want your misery. You're going to forget. You're not going to consciously remember this bargain, mm-hmm. but something in the back of your mind A is. A part of your soul. And you're, they're always going to know. So like, yeah. I'm assuming at some yeah, he point. He said something this, to the effect of, I get to hear that part of your soul scream for the rest of eternity. Yeah. So, so it's just very similar to No Way Home, except it, I think Marvel just needed a reboot. They were like, oh, look, everybody knows who Peter Parker is. Right. And we kind of need that to be a secret mm-hmm. for the sake of this. So let's figure out this reboot potential. Yeah. And just write the ship. I mean, it was a great way to yeah. implement. You know, it also created. What works is that they did it at the third film, and now there's all this tension yeah. that has to be resolved by making more films. Mm-hmm. Um, super cool, and I just I don't know. This series was a really fun uh, little short yeah. run, but I really enjoyed it. Was it was a good one, making me think. Yeah, this might be a good place. Like, I would recommend checking this out. You know, mm-hmm. because. It is it is from like 2007 or something, uh, but it does give you a decent, quick backstory, realignment to jump into an ongoing series with brand new day if you yeah. wanted to, right? Just just tossing that yeah, out. Yeah, and it's you know it does have like the some of the tropes of you know making a deal with the devil, mm-hmm. except there's no resolution here. Like by the end of the story, it's yeah. just happened. But yeah. um, there's lots of again, I I like humane real down to earth moments especially mm-hmm. when you know they can sneak those in uh, amongst gods essentially mm-hmm. you know or just mighty powerful men like it's it's always impressive when it, they don't have to just throw fists for an entire comic book to keep my interest so this had moments and elements of that and what would you do like anytime a comic book can make you ask the question what would you do in that situation you know could you leave your wife if you're 87 year old aunt was about to die mm. uh just because you, i mean not to underplay but just because you thought i maybe you were responsible for that i mean i i read this into it i can't remember if they put it out in actual words but mm-hmm. i feel like there was a conversation between them saying like look we're meant to be we're going to find each other again right and they so, kind of again they they pull that again she's mm-hmm. like you know she tells him in the movie i love you and she said don't tell me until you come find mm-hmm. me you know so sure it has we're gonna fix this written all over it, mm-hmm. um, but uh, doesn't make it any lesser of a story. But it, I really enjoyed it. it. It gives Peter Parker the secret again. Sure. So we can go yeah. back to business as usual. Secret identity with a little extra drama of getting to meet MJ again. Yeah, and Mephisto. Yeah, everyone is Mephisto. <coughs> Excuse so, me. Yeah. It was good. Um, we will be if you enjoyed this. Great. Um, We'll be back the next couple of weeks with. I'm not. This isn't the end of the episodes. Yeah. I'm just letting you know. 
We're going to have some other Spidey comics. More Join Spider-Man. the Discord link in the show notes if you want to know what we're reading before. Yeah, so you can we're, read we'll, we'll, ahead we'll, of the episode and discuss with us. Yes. Tori, what did you think? I liked it a lot. Um, oh, man, I had a real specific thought that I was going to drop on you, but... What a... Uh, was it completely ruined reading the the third the, was, the third act essentially? I was confused. Yeah, I thought, wow, this is there must have been some <laughs> stuff that, that I should have gone in knowing beforehand. Yeah, like it was just. But yeah, Tori uh, texted both of us last night in our chat and was like, "I accidentally read the third issue of four first. And Mar- I was like, "No, Marvel <laughs> Unlimited tried to take me from the first one to the fourth one. It did the same to me, yeah. and I caught. And I was it. like, "This doesn't feel right." Yeah. It said one of four and four of four, so yeah. I had to go and hide it. I Maybe you should report that to Marvel Unlimited. Well, <laughs> because it's in the story run, you should be able to like. I mean, the way they set it up, the progression. Um, it makes sense that it would just go to the next issue that makes sense. Yeah. Um, also, they do a pretty good job of taking feedback, so maybe we'll reach out to them. Uh, their coding team works hard. If you remember what it was, just jump, jump in at any point. In. Sure, I will. Cool. Uh, do we need to just jump into trivia for time? I'm ready if you guys are. I'm ready. I'm ready. Cool. Uh, here we are with our two-man lightning round trivia where our questions are faster than Mephisto will make a deal with you to save your aunt. Uh, don't show my iPad on the screen. I'm pulling up my question. You got it. I I've think. got mine first. Go ahead. Um, so we're going to go ahead and treat this as a four, uh, yeah, ish, four episode for the month. trivia round. The month being January. So yeah. we're not there yet. Spidey wary. Well, back by the time you're listening to this, it will be January yeah. for you. So my this first one is a giveaway. Yep. Because I want to do an impression. <laughs> and before we said this. Um, Torrance said his involved in impression too. So just so, you, sorry. Go ahead. So if we both are asking the same question, I guess we have to possibly quit the podcast again. Just so you know, when you say this is a giveaway, the pressure for me to get this correct goes <laughs> through the roof because if I don't know it, I have just stare at the camera like an idiot. Okay. So like we just mentioned, mm-hmm. um, I have spent the last like three days, four days rewatching the Raimi verse. The Garfield verse. Yeah, I don't know who directed that. The Amazing Spider-Man and the, the, Spider-Man. the Tom Holland ones. The so MCU. I I googled Spider-Man trivia and one came down to it. And all it said was one thing, and I was like, "That's my question." Uh-huh. So, what was the name in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man number one? Uh-huh. Uh huh. What, what was the name of the wrestler that Spider-Man went up against? Oh. <laughs> Um, was this your question? No, but okay, I, good. I know the answer. I think I know the answer to this, but I'm drawing a heavy blank right now. Hold on, give me a second. You can play uh, ding dong music. Uh, okay, God, that is so loud. I'm sorry. See, I'm like thinking of the back end of the impression right now, and I will destroy. You. No, not that what part. Does he say? My my impression is him saying his name. Right. Um, is it the Crusher, no. or, I can't remember. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Bone saw is ready. <laughs> Bone saw, of course. <laughs> yeah, not a giveaway. I, I I don't feel like the impression came out the, as well as I normally do it because I yeah. was worried about the mic. Have you done that several times? Oh yeah. <laughs> like I just like whenever he came onto the screen, I turned to Holly and I was and I said, "I'm going to try it again, but I'm going to back off the mic." Yeah, because I feel like. I am Macho Man Randy Savage yeah. whenever I do it. <laughs> Bone saw is ready. <laughs> Gold. So, yeah, that's the good stuff. So I'm sorry. I, I, I thought it was a giveaway. I, I remember exactly. I almost did this like without have like. given it away. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I was thinking the crusher for some reason. Bone saw. Yeah, bone, bone saw. saw. All right. Wow, so uh, I'm winning. You are winning. You, you knew that? Yeah. Torrance? I yeah. did. Okay, I'll give mine next. Uh... There are multiple answers for this possible. I'm only going to give you just if you get one, that's your point. Who, or let me see, I'll give you a little backstory. When the Hobgoblin was introduced into Spider-Man comics, they were looking for a new villain without bringing back the Green Goblin and without making his son the Green Goblin again or doing anything like that. They were looking for just some fresh villain. So they came up with the Hobgoblin, which was actually a time of like a lot of controversy for the Spider-Man. Like I think people lost their jobs over arguing uh, the very thing that I'm going to ask you about. Hmm. 
when they first wrote him into comics, they had not yet decided who he was going to be underneath the mask. Who was the... I got Not the first unmasked, because it was kind of a trope that they kept unmasking, and it wasn't actually... That's not who it is. It's somebody that's brainwashed or something. But who was the first canon... At least I'm 99% sure that this was the first, like, okay, this is actually him. Mm-hmm. I'll, even though they retconned it later to make it somebody else. If you can give me the retcon answer, I'll also accept that. But who was the first canon hobgoblin? Well, I'm not going to give my answer. I'm going to say, uh, because you kind of told me beforehand, um, I always thought, because I've never read any hobgoblin, mm-hmm. I always assumed it was Harry. Ah. Uh, that's not my answer. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, because my mind started spinning, and I have an idea... I have a thought. Uh huh. It seems crazy, but it also seems comic booky. Yeah. Uncle Ben. No. Oh, that would have been wild, right? Yeah. Uh, would a be brainwashed very comic Uncle Ben. Yeah, yeah, brainwashed Uncle Ben. Uh, any guesses for you, just for funsies? Uh, I don't have any guesses. Cool. No. Ned Leeds. So his friend. His friend. Uh, in the comics, is more of a coworker. Okay. Um, Ned Leeds in the MCU is his best friend, but also is basically who Genki is, Miles Morales' mm-hmm. best friend. Like, mm-hmm. he looks and acts like Genki, but his name Ned Leeds. They kind of yeah. smush the characters together. But yeah, um, the Hobgoblin was Ned Leeds, and then they retconned later because that pissed off a lot of people at Marvel mm. that, they, that I couldn't agree at all. Like, it was, like, legitimate fighting, people getting let go, uh, people spearheading, taking over projects that people were working on just to, like, go, no. I've already drawn it. This is who it is. Uh, I watched a whole like short little documentary on that last night. Interesting. Um, Roderick Kingsley. Um, no idea who that actually is. ended up being the Hobgoblin, I believe. Okay. Uh, when they wreck on her, maybe. Yeah, I think that was it. That or. Hold on. Yeah, I think that's who it was. Oh. Uh, John Romita Jr. was involved in all of that. It was okay. a, a big mess, so apparently. earlier in this, just a few minutes ago, I said, I'm winning, yeah. forgetting how trivia works. So actually, we're tied zero to zero. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Torrance? Okay. This writer, or, okay, let me back up. This might be a real easy one, too. It's fine. So we'll I, see. I thought Bonesaw was going to be an easy yeah. one. <laughs> oh, Bird. <laughs> A little tear if I can. <laughs> Writer Mike Conroy described him as one of the dimmest villains, Spider Man villains. By the way, this is name, name that, that Spider Man. M- name that super villain. Name yeah. that super villain. Pow, 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 pow. Whose um, real name is Alexei Setsyovich. Oh, that was my guess before I even started, Drew. I, I almost said the rhino. Yes. Wow. The only reason I know that is because of my you binging. Just watched, yeah. 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 So whenever you said dim, I just instantly thought the rhino just because of the connotation of it. And I was like, I didn't remember his name, but I remembered he was played by Paul, Paul Giamatti. Giamatti yeah. And <laughs> when he shows up in the post credit scene or whatever it was, mm-hmm. or at the very end of the movie, I was just like, oh, that CGI is bad. Um, uh-huh. But he's just like, I am whatever you said my name is, and but you can call me the rhino. Yeah. So. Did you see his silhouette in No Way Home? As one yep. that was trying to break through at the end. Oh, no, I, I didn't. I was yeah. wondering. I, yeah. I need to. They had him. Up. Craven the Hunter had a silhouette up there. Oh, I'm nice. sure others that I missed. Hey. Cool. I you just, were winning. I just beat you in a Spider-Man quiz. Ouch. Of course. My heart. I have one point. You have zero. We still have three weeks to go. Yeah. Uh, I'm a buzzer beater kind of guy. Yeah. So, Speaking of that, uh, hashtag slap bet. I'm, I'm going to get it done. So we'll have to consult <laughs> with Colby. Yeah. Um, to see if you single-handedly pull something together, do you get to slap me? Or I always thought it was like all or nothing. Like <laughs> if something comes out, we're both safe. That seems. Uh, I'm just resigned to the fact that we're gonna both going like to slap each other. I do not want to get slapped. We have what? What is the date today? <laughs> it's uh, the 29th, I believe. So we have two days to release something. Oh no, it's the 30th. It's today and tomorrow. <laughs> today and tomorrow. Yeah. You have 36 hours. Yeah. That's enough time. Okay. Yeah, we'll make it work. Uh, cool. Any closing thoughts, fellas? Um, I have a question. Oh, did you? No. Okay. Um, do you um, like this approach we're trying where we're going to cover stories quickly that you can jump onto week after week? Or do you like the longer ones where you know for th- four weeks you're going to hear us talking about one storyline? Yeah. I, I, I'd love to know what you think. Um, yep. If you're listening to this and you're already on the Discord, you are duty-bound 
to tell us your thoughts right now. If you're listening to this and you haven't joined the Discord, please join the Discord. And yep. then at that time, you will be duty-bound to answer that question. Yep. Leave a review on podcasts wherever you listen. Uh, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Uh, we're putting out a lot of content. Uh, really appreciate the feedback we get and just uh, sharing the word, sharing the gospel. Yeah. Having some fun <laughs> with our questions of the week on Discord that come from all kinds of people. And yep. sometimes it's more than one a week. Um, we want to know what your thinking uh, thinkings are of, hey, which Batman did you think was the best on screen? So, you know, things like that. Yep. Cool. All right, until next time, we'll see you later, and uh, happy new year. Bye. See you later. With great power comes great responsibility. Don't, don't find this and spend too much money on it. Two Man Comic Book Club podcast is hosted by Alex Miller and Drew Morris. Our graphic and logo work is done by Tessa Price, and our original compositions and theme music were composed by Drew Morris.